everyone has a bright light inside of them that deserves to be seen by the world. That's why it's time to shine the light on the extraordinary who are accomplishing phenomenal things. This is the Shine Out Loud show with Lillian Ogbogo. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever in the world you are. Welcome to another episode of the Shine Out Loud show with me, Lillian Ogbogo. Yes, it's going to be a musical festival for us tonight. We have a treat in store because we have the fantastically awesome, multi-talented, instrument playing, musician, conductress. I can't find enough adjectives to define Nadine Lee on the show tonight. So join me and welcome the incredible, fantastic Nadine. Hi, Nadine. Hey, how are you doing? I am good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. I am so <laughs> glad that you could join us tonight. Me too. Me too. I'm, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> uh, you know, and just because, you know, just in case people don't know, I've actually taken this woman's time out of her studio time. So she's actually at the studio and she's taking some time to talk to us over here at Shine Out Loud Show. So that, for me, is like total awesome here. <laughs> it's all good it's my pleasure uh, so you know I talk about you and when I describe you as this multi-talented artist you've worked with a gambit of people from Stormzy all the way down to the fantastic Annie Lennox so when people think of you what do you want them to think of you in terms of your musically who are you when you stand up musically I am myself, authentically myself. Um, I'm somebody who's learned um, that that's okay, just being you, whether you're exactly the same as everyone else or you're different, like, so different that you're confused, but hey, that's just who you are. (laughs) Okay. You know, I'm authentically me. So when people look at me, I want them to know that I'm okay just being myself. Okay, all right. And then you, you know, so looking at your album, your your album that came out in February, in fact, a few weeks ago, you blogged mm-hmm. about it at the close of 2017, and yep. you've just released it. So tell us about the journey to get this album out into the world. Do you know what? Um, I've been a session musician for a while, and um, one day I was, you know, just chilling in my kitchen talking to my, my guy, and um, we were... Um, talking about where we wanted to go what we wanted to do next um, and I was like I actually really want to do some you know some theatre work I want to change okay. and so we talked about it and then I just decided you know what in the process of doing that I'm going to start writing my own stuff as well so I started to write my own stuff um, I just got my iPad got my acoustic bass sat in my living room and just produced two tracks Um uh, and then I was like, oh, I actually like these. So I thought, let me develop them. And then I started developing them. And then I went on tour. Someone asked me to do a show and asked me if I had my own band. And I was like, um, I just said, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, and so then I said, right, now I need to do, I need to get these songs down so I can get a band together and teach these songs. Right. And and that's how it happened. It just started to spiral from there and then um yeah eventually um I, I you know i got a few friends together that i've worked with for years and hence now i have a project oh <laughs> uh, you have more than a project you have a really beautiful um ep that's just come out so Thank you know you. You, you're welcome and you know you just talked about how it kind of organically came through what was the most surprising aspect of, of this album for you The most surprising thing was how much it's made me delve into myself and discover myself. Um, Because when you're writing a solo project, you start to reflect on, you know, a lot of things that you're talking about and how they relate to you. Um, And so this album, because that, I mean, the whole title is all about me saying, finally, Nadine. Um, Because it's, I've actually been through so much musically and in my life um, to get me to this point. 
And so the process was like almost like a healing for me. You know, I talk about um, finding the formula of life. I talk about feeling better about myself. I talk about being special. These are all the different songs. Um, I talk about um, feeling a, a little unfinished because of the lack of relationship that I had with my dad. And I also talk about finding love. You know, Contagious Love is about me and how, um, you know, my husband came into my life. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it's helped me to discover me in a, in a whole new way and express it, you know, in a way that I never thought I would. Okay. Um, and actually, I, I, I can actually see, and this is really weird because I can see different flavors of you in this, in this music. And mm -hmm. um, based on, on everything that you've done, you, your sound changes almost <laughs> yeah. in each track. So it, it's funny how reading your bio, they, you know, it talks about you being neo soul, but with genres attached to you. So mm -hmm. you aren't one genre, you seem to be multiple genres. Yeah, I, I guess that's, again, that's me being authentically me. <laughs> I'm just like, um, I've had so many different experiences that have taken me from, like, I was, a, um, I grew up in an Irish um, area um, where I, we were the only black family. Right. I went to a predominantly black church growing up doing gospel music. Um, my secondary schools, I was, you know, the minority. So I, I've been in a lot of places where sometimes there's a load of things that are the same as me sometimes there's a load of things that are different to me right and every environment i go into changes just like my music so it really is reflecting where i've been ah i like that <laughs> now you have a behind the scenes youtube video about uh finally the dean and you briefly mm -hmm. cover a maxwell tune are there any <laughs> other artists that you would like to cover during your shows um, funny you say that because I have a, a 12 minute medley um, video coming out um, that's actually we're working on the mix as we speak I'm watching the computer right now um, and the guys are working on it but um, I cover Jill Scott I cover Golden um, mm. yeah um, I've, I'm covering um, Don't You Worry About a Thing Stevie Wonder um, wow. I'm covering India Irie, I Am Not My Hair. Um, I'm covering um, Angie Stone, Black Brother. Um, and I'm covering Lauren Hill as well, um, Duop. So, and I, yeah, as you said, I have Ascension in there as well by, um, by Maxwell. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm covering quite a few of those guys because they inspired me growing up. They were who I was listening to when I was... Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know, 15 and above. <laughs> okay. So, you know, and you, you can tell because, like I said, your, your music sounds and changes in, in such a way that it, it's hard to say, let's pin you down to one genre, which must be very fun for your music label. Um. Yeah, I'm actually not signed. So um, we are... Um, I um, I'm working with a company called E Music, who mm -hmm. um, who um, produce and do stuff like that. So I'm managed by that, and we 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 kind of um, you know have a lot of fun um, discovering me as an artist because, um, like I said, it's the first project that I put out, and it's something that I'm gonna do a lot of. Um, but I'm not afraid to do what I feel rather than you know there's so many rules that people have and I kind of just like to um sometimes break the rules I'm that kind of girl <laughs> oh oh you're my kind of girl <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so we're gonna have fun since you're a rule breaker let's have some fun you know <laughs> I, I I'm scared now Oh, I promise I'll play nice. I'll play nice. No, I don't. Okay. I don't play. I don't. <laughs> you know, um, you, you said something that, you know, for people who don't know you, you said, oh, this is your first project. But for people who don't know you, let, let me reiterate, you've been in music since you were six. And this mm -hmm. is the part that has me in total awe of you. 
So by the time you were six, you were playing the drums. By yep. the time you were eight, you had the piano under your belt. And at the age of 14, you were playing the bass guitar. Apart from mm -hmm. the fact that this in itself is just a phenomenon, <laughs> what drew you to playing instruments and which of these is your favorite to play? Um, well, I was surrounded by music all the time. I, 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 my mom was like at church, like nearly seven days a week. And in the church I went to, there was, you know, there was an adult choir practice. So I had like old school gospel. Mm -hmm. I had new school gospel. Um, at nearly every day, um, I had urban gospel being shot at me. You know, I saw musicians playing all the time. Right. It was inspirational. It was exciting. And as a kid, something that looks like that, you just want to be a part of it. And so I got hooked. Um, I was obsessed with music. And then my brother is um, or was a DJ at the time. So I'd come home and I'm listening to rare grooves and I'm listening to this. My older sister's a singer, so she's singing around the house. And so... I had really no choice. I was just drawn into this thing. <laughs> okay, so music has been in your entire life, and then you you then marry into music because your husband, um, <laughs> who plays the sax on the album as well, and your live show. Yes, yes, he does. He's um he's a saxophonist, and he's um he's um also plays the piano, and he also um. He also works in the studio as well. So he does like mixing and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, now my house if you, is worse than when I was young because <laughs> I have a studio in my back garden. Um, I have three kids who are into music and my husband's just as bad as me. He loves it. <laughs> you know, I was going to ask, how is it working and playing together? But you've just answered that question. <laughs> yeah, it's, we we play together, we play apart, you know, um, but when we come together, it's cool because, I mean, he's got a song on his album where it's just me and him, and that is, you know, a lot of people's favourite song. So when his album comes out, I'm sure you'll love that too. Oh, it sounds, you know, when that comes out, please keep us posted. We will love to hear it. I will Be do. So, and would I be correct in thinking that he is the voice that we hear on the song the opening of better <laughs> no uh. he's not <laughs> and that is not the first time i've had that question <laughs> if i if i ask him to sing anywhere he would probably run about three thousand miles away uh, <laughs> his voice is definitely on his instrument his saxophone but um my that's my brother-in-law on better my sister's husband ah so mm -hmm. even your your sister's husband is okay. So basically, you guys have just music locked down as a family. <laughs> That's basically the family <laughs> business is music. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I guess so. Yeah, we pull it out of the bag when we need it. Okay, I can imagine Christmas must be fun at your house. It really is. <laughs> I'm coming to Chris. I'm coming for Christmas at your house. You, I'll just bring should. my tape recorder. I will sit there and just be like. I'm just sitting in the corner. Just fix me a plate. I'm good. I'll just listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is kind of cool. Christmas. Um, I posted on um, not the, not this December, but the previous December on Christmas Day. We actually like went in my studio in the garden and we just made some music, and that was so much fun because everybody plays something. So we kind of just found our place and then made a song, and it was nice. It was cool. So, do we ever get to hear that song? Let's say on YouTube or something. It, it's on my Instagram, actually. Really? Um, okay. From December 2017. So, you should be able to see it on there. I'm going back to crawl through your Instagram and find this. <laughs> yeah. So, then you'll see some of the faces that, you know, um, were on it. But, yeah, I mean, that, again, it's just a load of fun. And, um, yeah, everybody seems to like that, actually, because that... that kind of kicked off on Instagram I bet because it, it will you know when people are having fun it shows and when it's a family having fun oh, come on you know you know we eat that up and it's Christmas we want, <laughs> we want that kind of energy yeah yeah for real it, it was and it, it was a moment for us as well so we were like you know what we're gonna record this we haven't done it yet but we will cool okay so 
uh, before we continue, I need to say congratulations on your award-winning gospel choir. And Thank you. You're welcome. And, you know, for those who don't know, you're also a musical director or, you know, a conductor of a choir. How did you come about to be to direct a, a choir? Um, well, I, um, gosh, so I've um, uh, been doing, I've been singing for ages and I've got, and I started directing choirs when I was, I guess, 13, 14, 15, maybe. Um, and then I worked with another company who, um, you know, traveled around doing choirs and putting choirs together and that kind of thing. And I, I kind of developed my craft with that company. And then um, I, and then I was kind of asked by from that opportunity by university to see if you know if I wanted to direct and develop their choir. Okay. And and so that is when I said yeah. So I directed that for like a term, and then two years later they called me back and said, look, we want you back um, to do the same thing and to teach um, other modules. And so that's where I've been for like for the last five years I've been um teaching there two days a week um doing the choir and other stuff so yeah it's cool it's it's fun um I love it because the students are hungry um they try to get the best out of themselves and um well, the journey with that is that we kind of started off with like five people and then you know it's it's ended up being like over 60 people now and we kind of just developed our sound, won a few competitions, um, came second in a few, and you know, and so yeah, we've we've kind of just you know made a little name for ourselves among the universities. Okay, well that's really amazing. But you also went on to um, you, what was the show? You went on to the BBC show as well. Ah uh, yeah, BBC Songs of Praise, Reco- Gospel yes. Choir of the Year, yeah, and that was amazing because. Um, um, I, I think Seal wanted us to win, um, and that was enough for us. And whatever anyone else said didn't matter at, at that point, because from the time Seal said, "Yeah, if I was going to choose a choir, it would be them," we were like, "Okay, cool, we, we, a, we're doing good." Yeah, you, you're like, it doesn't matter if I didn't win. Seal yeah. said, "We we're the ones, we're good." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so and and that, the whole choir went home happy with that thought. So we're good. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we are looking at your life, your music, and what inspires you. Now, I'm going to have to switch back because, you know, we've talked about the fact that you are also a drummer. And it, it's it's something because, for me, you don't hear enough about women drummers, especially black women who are drummers. So mm-hmm. what drew you to drumming? So um, what my cousin's a drummer and I used to watch him play and he doesn't just play drums his whole mind and body goes into it so I mean this guy when he plays any song by the end of it he's sweating so you can see that he's putting life into it and again that inspired me Um, I'm a very emotional emotionally connected person and I love seeing people happy I love seeing what makes people tick and so I guess seeing him go through those emotions I wanted to understand what he felt like so I mm-hmm. started doing it myself and I, I I totally understood what he felt like it made me feel great and I guess for me um, being um, uh, young at the time and you know not having my dad at home maybe I had I mean subconsciously maybe it was an outlet for me you know music became something that I held on to so maybe it filled a, a little gap for a, a time being uh, okay and you know and Speaking of your dad, because that actually links quite well to this question, I, I looked at the lyrics of Unfinished, and mm-hmm. and you talk about it being about you know your father leaving and and all and all of the emotions around that. So the question mm-hmm. I have is, you know, being a such an emotionally raw song, how do you deal with actually preparing to perform it with your own emotions to actually perform the song live? That's a funny question because at my launch I was meant to sing the song and I confessed to the crowd that I, I'm not actually, I wasn't actually ready to sing it then. Not out loud in front of an audience yet, 
So I'm aiming to do it on the 18th of April, but I'm gonna because I'm doing Pizza Express on the 18th of April. So at my next gig, I'm gonna sing it, and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna mentally prepare myself for it in that because um, I do have. Um, I guess I only started dealing with my emotions. This, that, that song is the first time I've ever spoken about it in public. Wow. And um, so for me, it, it's like, okay, yeah, sure. I didn't think about actually performing it. And then when I did think about performing it, I have to perform it at a right time. And it has to be the right mood. And I have to approach it with the right feeling so that I can, you know, deliver it without blubbering all over the place. And, you know, people not actually hearing the message behind it. Um, and the reason why it is on my album is not because I want my dad to hear it and to get um, to approach me or anything like that. It was more for the ones who, the dads who just don't get what happens to a child when, you know, you just totally just ignore their existence. Right. Um, and so it's it's a message, you know, guys, look, when you have a kid, they need you, regardless of how perfect or imperfect you are. They're going to love you regardless. And I would have loved to have had that experience, but unfortunately I didn't. So, and I only realized it when I got older. That's the worst thing. Because my mum was such a great mum that it, I, only, it, I only noticed I didn't have a dad when I got older and I thought, I'm getting married and I'm, you know, my kids ask for their granddad. And it's like, oh yeah, that, that's something I haven't really dealt with. Right. And so, yeah, so that's, that's where that you know those emotions and that feeling came from and i had to kind of put it in a song so yeah hopefully at my next gig i'm gonna just deliver it authentically happily um in a way that people get the message okay well i'm looking forward to hearing you deliver that song because i fully intend to be at your gig in april yay yes yay <laughs> <laughs> excited <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to it, and you know, so this this song is I can I cannot even imagine because I read the lyrics and I was like, wow, to yeah. actually put it out there. So yes, uh, you have my <laughs> author respect here. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So let's talk about inspiration. Now uh -huh. we've just talked about the fact that there. You know, there are not a lot of female drummers, you know, when we think about drummers, we instantly don't think about female drummers. But who yeah. are the female drummers that have inspired you? Um, I'll, I'll say one, and her name's Sheila E. Um, yes. Because she's a very beautiful woman who played um, for Prince. Um, and she inspired me, not just because she can play well, but because she's a woman um, through and through, um, she's a beautiful woman at that, and um, she hasn't compromised her femininity to be a drummer. She just is a, a woman who is happily being a woman and authentically playing the drums like without, if you, turn, if you close your eyes and turn around, you wouldn't know that she's a woman. And so I respect her to the maximum. Plus she knows her stuff. She also plays timbales, which um, my timbales, are, I have them on my gig as well. Okay. And um, they're actually her signature timbales. So <laughs> so she really is, like, one of my biggest inspirations. Because growing up, there were I didn't have any women around me who were playing drums. I didn't know any. Mm -hmm. um, and so I used to kind of look to, um, yeah, people that you see in the media and stuff like that. And she was one of them. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Sheila E because I was watching um, a series of videos on Prince last night, and she was doing her stuff, and I'm like, God, this woman, this woman can play drums, and yeah, so and she's we, amazing. Oh, absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah. So okay. So so those were your inspirations, and the fact is, you're also inspiring a, a set of amazing people. To, to learn music because you teach at the London College of Creative Media yeah. but you were in 2017 you were invited to Yale to teach now how did that happen <laughs> so you know what life is one of those things where whenever you meet people and I mean my whole life has been 
a big bunch of networking. And so I met, I had a friend who um, I was working with. Uh, actually, I met her by accident in England. She was over here working. And um, she's, she, you know, she was doing loads and loads of stuff and her career changed and all sorts. She did a PhD and then her first year of teaching, she dis, um, she got a job at Yale. Right. And they had a module um, where it was like around the world teaching and blah, 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 blah. So I was, happened to be in America and um, she was like, look, I'm teaching this module and um, you're from the UK and you teach, you know, in the UK. So it'd be great to have that exchange and maybe even workshop my choir. Um, and so I went in and I was, um, you know, asked lots of, you know, questions. Um, and so we had like a whole day of interacting with students and then, you know, workshopping the singers. And yeah, that was like one of the most cool days of my life because I, I went with my husband and, you know, we stayed in one of the professor rooms, you know, they have these special rooms and I'm like, you know, I went up to the door and it said professor on the door. And I'm just like, am I, is this for real? You know, I'm at Yale teaching music. Like, what is going on? Um, so that was, you know, that was something that was amazing. And getting to, you know, work with their singers and stuff was even even better. And, yeah, it was it was a great experience. Oh, I can, I, I, I can only imagine you know what i yeah that would have just been like okay surreal moments this is it <laughs> yeah and it really was i i kind of wanted to put my feet on the ground um but yeah they didn't touch the ground until i got back to england <laughs> <laughs> oh we've just had a question come in for you and the question is from norman and norman goes really like the cd on spotify and they thank want you to norman they want to know the backyard studio. Is it an escape as well from the from the house? Ooh, that's a good question. And yes, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Norman. I mean, like it's so great because I I find when you work from home, you need you need to be able to um, separate home life from work life. Yeah. And and also sometimes a creative space is hard to create when everyone's running around doing all sorts of things in the house. So going out to the studio where it's peaceful um, and we have everything there. We have TV in there. We have music in there. We have drums in there. We have every instrument you can think of. So we just kind of just go in there and it's our time to be ourselves. Okay. And that's, a, that's just the feeling that we get. My husband does it all the time. Like, He's like, babes, I'm gone. I'm gone in the studio. So I'm like, yep, yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, so it's also your escape as well. I love that. Mm. And I think this is a great place to segue into playing one of your songs. Yeah, go for it. I think, yes. Yeah, so let's do this. You know which one you're going to play? No surprise. I've got a What I'm gonna do That's what he said to me He's fine but looks ain't what's gonna keep me How do you know I want you? What makes you think I need you? You can't just say I love ya Hey, I'm not that easy Girl, you got love. Give you what you want love. Got what you need I just played a bit of Contagious Love. Cool. And, you know, you talked about 
um, already how contagious love was um, part of how you you know your your husband you and your husband's relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, what I love about the song is that it sounds like Nina Simone and Jill Scott musically had a love baby, and then they <laughs> called it contagious love, and. <laughs> It does. It sounds like it seriously sounds like Nina Simone and Jill Scott got together, and this is a, this is the love child. Wow, uh, it's funny you say that. My father-in-law actually um, gave me a book, the book on Nina Simone, because he thought um, that I kind of carried some of some of her vibe. So that's cool. I think your father-in-law is pretty much spot on. <laughs> No, seriously, because Nina and, you know, people say her name and say it with reverence, she had this ability that when she sat at, sat at her piano and played, there was uh, an authority, there was um, an undeniable presence about her. And mm. when I listen to your music and listen to what you do, and even just the images of your stills for your picture, there's mm. a way that you hold yourself with your music that's just... <sighs> Ah, it's just mm -hmm. it's just beautiful to see. So wow, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So contagious love. When you sat down to write it, what were you hoping that people will take away from it? Sorry, say that one more time. When you sat down to write the song, what were you hoping that your listeners will take away from the song? Will take away with them with the song. Um, that. It's okay to um, it's okay to feel the way you feel about a person, um, but always don't be afraid to ask the question that's in your head. Because um, my husband saw me, and we, you know, the question that he asked me that I put in my song um, was he wanted to know if I needed him to be my man. Now, I'm, I'm someone who loves words and a need is something you can't do without Ooh. and a want is something that is something you want but if you don't get it it's cool and and so when he asked me that question because um, the story happened as I was up in my mom's room on the phone and um, we were on the phone chatting and then my mom called me down the stairs because she needed me she kept you know when your mom's calling you over and over mm -hmm. again and she's mm -hmm. like and she won't stop. So I was like, he was trying to talk to me and ask me a question. And my mom's going, ah, 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 ah. So I was like, look, let me call you back. So that was it. So he was like, right, I'm going to type this message to this girl uh, to see, you know, if she really wants to be with me. So he texted it to me. And so I'm there helping my mom. And I look at my phone and I'm like, oh. And then he actually really made me think, do I need you in my life? Like wow that is a really big question and so i that's why i put it in my song because i want people to think about that because um sometimes we you know we we kind of carelessly like take people on relationship wise in our lives and um you know when when we do it carelessly sometimes it's to our detriment sometimes mm. we're lucky enough that you know it works out well and we get the right person but you know lack of thought and and sometimes gets us into places that I believe we don't need to be in. Mm. So, um, yeah, so he made, he made me really think about that. And so in this song, it's like, you know, it's asking the questions, tell me what you need, what do you need? So I'm, I'm answering those questions. I'm like, I want you to love me daily. I want you to take care of, you know, stuff at home. I want you to be the man for me that I need. And then, you know, just actually really really just love me and know that i'm worth it and so that's what that's what the song is about is it's about him knowing yeah i'm worth it and because because he knows that i'm worth it um i believe a man can love a woman into submission and um i'm not afraid to say that i i will submit to my husband any day of the week because he's a great man and he has my best interests at heart so he's not a dictator. We don't run a dictatorship. We run a marriage where we respect each other. And I think, you know, that's what that song says to me. Wow. Wow. And wow. Yeah, your husband should be giving classes. He should. He should. <laughs> <laughs> Play down. You know, he should just be giving classes. 
black <laughs> men out there, come to this class. <laughs> really, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so you know. I love what you do, and I love the fact that you are unafraid with what you do. Now, so here's a question for you. What mm -hmm. would it take to get more women into drumming? Um, gosh, you really ask some good questions. Um, I try. <laughs> <laughs> These are like questions I thought I was prepared, but you, you kind of just slapped me on the head with that one. Okay, so, well, I guess, I guess it would probably be with more women just understanding that it's fun and it's not a man's thing it's yeah. it's just i mean rhythm is something that is not masculine or feminine it's just um something that it's like your heartbeat you know there's a yeah. rhythm there and you just go with it um and so i guess sometimes women have a stereotype of themselves and what they should be like um and it's something that i went through thinking gosh is this womanly enough and i've had people say stuff to me and that but it's something that I couldn't control. So I guess I would say to women, if you really love it, do it. And don't worry about, you know, um, the consequences of doing it. Because if, you be, if you're yourself, then, you know, the good things will come to you. And regardless, you know, my husband doesn't see me as any less than a woman. In fact, he sees it as, you know, something that drove him, you know, toward me more. You know, he respects me for it. So... Yeah, I guess, yeah, just see it, love it, and do it. Okay. All right, folks, you've heard it. Women, get out there, try some drumming classes. You never know, you may love it. <laughs> and it's so nice when you're angry. You just take it out on the drums, you know? Exactly, and I'm <laughs> sure you have some great arms from all that drumming work. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, drumming is not necessarily in the arms. It's more in the wrist. Oh, know, okay. That. See, what do I know? <laughs> Contrary to what we believe, you don't have to have big muscles to play drum, which is why it's cool to be a woman's thing. Good. Okay. All right. So you have collaborated with some incredible people from Stormzy, like I said in the beginning, to Annie Lennox and, you know, others in between. What will be your next dream, dream collaboration for you? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, I'm going to say Jill Scott. Straight Ooh. Uh, yeah. I think being on stage with her would be fun. It she's a very fun individual, and mm -hmm. she's quite honest. She, you know, I can relate to her in so many different ways. So, yeah, Jill Scott would be the one for me. Okay, I can actually see that. I can see that working. Did you see Jill, that last um, performance she did that got the entire Instagram talking? Oh yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like Jill, Jill, Please. sis, can we talk <laughs> about this performance? Like, I know, right? She's just and she's not afraid. She just does her thing, and I love it. Mm, so listen, she I told gonna, us who she know. she is from the very beginning. She told us who she is, and she's not yeah. lying. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Exactly, her songs just say, "Listen, I ain't like." Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's so true. She is, she's got everything going on, so. Cool, cool, cool. So that is your dream collaboration. So what we'll do here, we'll set out the intention and whoever is he listening and somebody's going to create that connection, we're going to make sure we get you, we, we find a way to get Jill Scott. That's how we put the energy out there. Yeah, let's do this, man. <laughs> let's do this. Jill, I'm up for it if you are. Get cool. some of that UK flavor with some of your US flavor. Let's go. And you know she loves the UK. She's here quite often performing. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you never know who might bump into her, who might know you, and all of a sudden you're doing Jill Scott. All I say is when that happens, you need to remember me. <laughs> I will, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring her on with me. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell Norman, yeah, I, I, I didn't have the pizza when I went there, but I went to Popeye's. So. <laughs> Norman, I hope you've heard. Um, she did not have the pizza. And she went to Popeyes. <laughs> I listen. I personally don't understand the obsession with Popeyes, but I'll just—it's a biscuit. I mean, we don't have biscuits in England, so it was the biscuit. Yeah. I, you know what? I I will I will put this out there, and I know it's gonna get me the hate, but 
I preferred KFC's biscuit to Popeye's. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> And because we have KFC in England, although we don't do a biscuit, because, I mean, if we start getting into the, the US, UK lingo, that is not, that's just bread. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just biscuity bread. That's okay. <laughs> Our biscuits are crunchy, you know, they're totally different. But, hey, you call them cookies. But anyway, so this is why I say, like, yeah, because we, ha- we don't have, we don't have Popeyes over here, so... We said, yeah, let's do Popeye's biscuit. Okay. Okay. So, um, Popeye's it is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of Popeye's, but that's just me. People don't come for me. I know y'all love the Popeye's. Please do not come for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I'm very mindful because you need to get back to the studio and continue what you were doing. Um, mm-hmm. I have a couple more questions. Okay. You're an artist, you're a teacher, you're, you're a conductor, and you do, uh, you know, a wife and a mother and all of those things. How do you incorporate self-care into your life? Mm, another good question. I like to regularly go swimming. Um, I like to go to the steam room and the sauna. So I treat myself mm-hmm. straight after I do my laps. Um, and then I like to get my feet and nails done. So I love having Manny and Petties. Nice. Um, yeah, I kind of just, um, cause I'm a musician. So when my kids go to school, um, when I've got like the time out, I try to book that in. And I also self care for me is mentally self care. So I just take a moment back, write things down, write down how I'm feeling. Um, write on what I want to do with myself and try to keep my head, you know, in a space where it's not confused. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's but trust me, the steam room and sauna, like when I went on tour the other day and we had like free gym membership nearly everywhere we went. So believe you me, that steam room and sauna everywhere we were saw me. Aye, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know i yeah i'm a big fan of the self-care and we need it we need to always find a way to get our balance back and yeah. you know so looking at your journey so far and as far as you come what advice would you give your 18 year old self oh lovely so i would say to the 18 year old me um it's because i think it took me you know 19 years to get to know me Mm. I'd say take your time learning yourself I I, I, I'd like the fact that I learned myself over a period of time because my experiences made me who I am so I just say don't worry about you know those those um, negative experiences just keep it moving and don't let anything stop you trust yourself and be yourself Ah, that's awesome. And I think that that advice is a great place to segue into our next song, which is going to be better. Cool. So... I will try to be a better man and live my life and understand everything I have was given for a reason. I will take my time and realize my purpose is beyond my eyes. Everything was given to me for a reason. Yeah. I feel better now. Better now than I've ever been Better now Better than before I feel better now Better now than I've ever been Better now Better than before And when I wake 
to the rising sun I know that God's work is done I know it's for life, not for a season Okay, and that was your incredible song, Better. So, you know, Nadine, I am just loving our conversation and I could talk to you for hours on end. But unfortunately, I have to release you back into your studio to get finish what you were doing. Um, I will love to get you back on the show at another point because there's so much more I want to know about you. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Let's, let's do it. Awesome, awesome. So before, before I let you go, I have just two more questions. Sure. Um, so the question I have is, how do you bounce back from setbacks? Okay. Um, setbacks I look at as stepping stones to the future. So um, it just shows me, kind of helps me direct where I'm going. So setbacks are not necessarily shutdowns. They're just rerouting. Okay. Uh, okay, that's very powerful. And what are you currently reading and what was the last book or what was the last book you read? Um, I'm currently reading um, Michelle Obama's, um, um, what do you call it again? Um, Becoming. I'm reading uh, that at the moment. How yeah. are you finding it? I love the fact that she that she's come from, you know, a place where you would never have thought she would have come from i love that um i love how she tells her story i love how she talks about her husband um she i love how her husband kind of helped mellow her out and relax her um yeah the story's great and i love who she she is becoming (laughs) during the story you see her, her development and i think it's great for young women to see that because sometimes you know young women see things and they just never think they're going to be able to get there but her story is great because she came from a place where she was practically sharing a room with her brother to not having enough to having too many rooms she couldn't sleep in all of them so and and she did it with integrity and without stepping on anybody's head or anything like that um so i absolutely respect and love her book i think it's something that every young black woman man person in the world whether you're wherever you come from you should read it because anything's possible awesome i have my copy and i just need to finish my other book so i can get into it on the street which is why i'm still reading it because you know finding a moment i have to wait till everyone's Again, studio time. I just go in there and read a book. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. I like it. I like the hideaway and read. I I definitely think that should be a thing. Where are you going? I'm going to read. Leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we know that you're coming up next. You have a performance in April. Could you just remind us the date and time and how we can get tickets? Sure. Um, The date is the 18th of April. The doors open at 6.30, I think. Um, You can get tickets from... Just go to my website, um, which is nadineleemusic.com. And if you go to my tour schedule page, you'll see all my gigs on there. And you can just click on that, and that will take you to the link where you can buy tickets for the show. Awesome. Folks, you've heard it. Let's support Nadine Lee. Um, Please do. I want to sell it out just like my other one. I want to have a consistent sold-out gig. Exactly. And there's enough of us in London to make that happen. So let's let's head out and let's support this amazing young woman and her amazing music. So, Nadine, once again, I cannot thank you enough for being on the show. No, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. So, folks, you've heard it here, and you know what to do. Go and buy the tickets stop by Nadine's page listen to her music don't just stream it buy it download it own it Ooh. and love it so fo- <laughs> so folks it's a wrap same time same same place next week you know what to do goodbye mm-hmm. you've been listening Bye. to the shine out loud show if you want to connect with us or let us know what you thought of today's show be sure to follow us on twitter at shine out show